So I've worked on the, uh, the brakes for my TSI and I have them almost done. This is the, uh, the left gear leg here. And uh, you can kind of see I'm done with this part of the assembly. So the, uh, the things that I did different, originally, of course, I, I added the upgraded uh, Matco brakes. It's a double piston brake, so it's bigger. Let me get away, back up a little bit. So what that does is normally the brake piston would stop about here, and then you have this tube, which would go from here into the old hole, into the gear leg here, and the piece that sling provides would work. So a side effect of getting the bigger brake calipers for me was to get this separation here for this piece. And I, I don't know the thinking behind sling, but I assume it's to get the heat from this brake rotor as far away from the nylon brake line as you can. So one, I guess the heat that, that travels up to here and then the heat coming off the brake rotor just has some distance to dissipate before it gets to that nylon or whatever material it is, brake line. So as you can see here, I tried to uh, leave the nylon brake line, and I'm gonna call it nylon, I'm not sure exactly what material it is, the plastic, as far up into the, into the gear leg as I could to protect it from the heat. So what I had to do is I drilled a hole that was a little bit higher on the gear leg, but is still gonna be covered within the wheel pants without a problem. I got the wheel pants out and kind of measured how they fit on here. So the, uh, the hole that was normally here, I filled with epoxy. Um, I got a syringe and I, I mixed up some super fill and I pumped it in here until it started coming out over here. Um, and, and basically, you know, there's just a passageway that sling has added into the gear leg for this brake line. And you just, when you redrill it, you're just tapping into that same passageway. So on this gear leg, it was no problem at all. It was very easy. Uh, it made sense. It took me just seconds to drill it out. And then I filled it with epoxy. And then I just, I sprayed some primer over it to protect the epoxy. Then I put the... Uh, the heat shield on there and it has velcro you can kind of see the velcro here and the velcro doesn't keep it very tight it does keep it on there um, so i added some safety wire uh, here and here i did two strips of safety wire and that really tightened it up and i think that's uh i i'd have to go back and reread the instructions i don't think sling said to do that but i did it anyway um so anyway the other thing was this part that came from sling, and I'll show you that. So these, these are the little parts that come from sling. And when I changed the brake caliper to the bigger brake caliper, and then I drilled the new holes, these pieces weren't gonna work. I, uh, I played around with bending them differently and it just wasn't gonna work. Um, and because like I had mentioned, I, I wanted to get that uh, nylon, whatever material, brake line as far away from the brake uh, rotor as I could, I decided I, I needed to make this longer. So I went to AutoZone and I got standard, this is steel quarter inch outside diameter brake line. Um, so I got a replacement steel quarter inch outside diameter brake line. Um, this was a foot long and I cut it, I cut it into the right size and I did some custom bending with a little pipe bender that I got from Harbor Freight for $9. Um, you know, you just basically put the tube uh, under here and then you wrap it underneath here. This sort of lifts up and out of the way and then you just bend it as you need to. So never used one of these, but it worked well. Um, another tool I'll show you is to cut it. I used this which is just a small tube uh, cutter. Um, it's actually part of another great Harbor Freight tool. Um, I use this on the pitot tubes. I bought this, and uh, when you're bending, when you're bending those little pitot tubes, those little thin aluminum, you put this the right. It comes with four. Um, 
of these springs and it just keeps it from uh, from uh, creasing. It, it just makes a smoother bend when you try to bend it. And then the kit actually was for a flare kit. I actually ended up using a quick fitting, a plastic quick fitting that pops onto the end of the tube. Um, so I didn't flare it. Um, but the cutter works great and these work great for that aluminum tube, but they do not work for steel. The steel, you have to use uh, a bender. So uh, that's what I did for that. And it, it turned out really well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. The other thing was, uh, this has got some sort of a anti-corrosion coating on it. When I put it in the bender, it, it just popped off. So I sanded it down and I sprayed some uh, high temperature silver paint on it that I had. And uh, I just figured that would be a little bit of a radiant heat reflector and it would give it some increased corrosion protection. Um, I mean, this is just bare steel, the one that Sling provides. I, I don't know if corrosion is an issue, but um, because this was black, I wanted to make it back to being silver. So maybe an unnecessary step, but it didn't add, but just a couple minutes. So anyway, um, that's my project for today. Um, I actually bought some more. This is the thicker protective sleeve that Sling gives you. And I bought, I bought an extra 10 feet or 12 feet of this because uh, I want to coat it in this everywhere. Um, so uh, I didn't have enough to run it all the way to the front of the plane. But on the inside of the plane, you can see where the tube comes in from the sidewall. And then it goes to the center piece. And, uh, and, and then that's where it ties into this T-fitting. Now, the T-fitting is particular because I have the handbrake. I do, I do not have the, the toe brakes. If you have the toe brakes, then obviously you would have independent left and right. Whereas mine are tied together for just... Uh, uh, simultaneous braking of both wheels so they just get fed into a T assembly and then run to the front of the plane. So um, the, the little protective hose that fits over the actual brake line, um, that's why I got some more of that because I wanted to run it all the way and then all the way to the front just to give it some extra protection. Um, I was going to get braided steel line um, and redo the whole brake system. But I just, I kept adding to the project scope and I just decided this was good enough and I would leave it at that. Um, because if you if you go to the, uh, if you use braided cable, uh, um, like a three size three AN braided stainless uh, cable, um, you gotta change all these fittings. And each of these fittings, so you gotta, you got to redo everything. And I just decided I didn't want to slow myself down and, and, uh, and then just keep adding to the scope. Um, down the road, if this isn't working out, I can change it. But uh, I think with just extending this up a little bit, which I was going to have to do to accommodate for the bigger brake rotors, which again was already a, you know, a change, um, I, I thought that was enough. And I think that'll keep the heat away because the the plastic nylon whatever brake line is up in the gear leg pretty protected um because initially when the nylon was coming all the way down here people were having it leak because i think it would get soft and it was melting but i think keeping it all the way up here i think i'm going to be okay so time will tell on that one uh but anyway that's the update for today uh thanks for watching